Hi, this is Catherine at One Precious Pearl, the next chapter. And today I'm participating in a five item challenge with Lisa from Junk Journal Gems. So I got this from Lisa today in the mail and I have it cut, but I have not opened it yet. So I'm just gonna unbox it now. Oh my word. Oh my gosh, look at all this stuff. Pretty burden. How pretty is this? Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at all of this. I, I just need five items. <laughs> okay, she says, Catherine, I'm so grateful to have made a new journal making friend. I don't run into other junk journal fans in my area. You're the closest so far. Lisa lives in Wisconsin and I live in both Illinois and Minnesota. I took the liberty of subscribing to your channel and hope others will as well. The journals you have shared give me a sense of your style of creativity. I hope I've included items you will enjoy using and maybe one that will be new to you. Crinkle is my fave. <laughs> and another that might stretch your creativity. The cellophane packages are simply for your journaling and journal making fun. The tissue paper package is for the challenge. Enjoy, have fun, and God bless your friend, Lisa. Look at all of this. Look at all of this. Wow. So, cool. so, so an FYI, my, I'm at my sister's house, and she's filming this for me. So she, I bet Lisa made those. And then there's some little stamps. Cute. Oh, and I'm sure she made this, too. There's a couple of little things, a mushroom... And then a stamps, fabric. Look at all that. Yeah, <laughs> little pockets. A little pocket. I love that fabric. Um, so this was part of it too. It's um, a flip up. It's got some pockets in the front, or a pocket, and then it flips out, and it has another little pocket here and some writing. And then Lisa had these. Little tags tucked in. The back is so pretty with the birds. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of flip it up and uh, look at the flowers. It's so and pretty. A little playing card. This is a belly band here. This is like a little wallet. I love it. And then another little tag with a pocket here and she, some more of that fabric that yep. she stamped. <laughs> and um, another cute tag, two pockets here. Flip it up, more oh, pockets, <laughs> more tags. Oh, look at all that for journaling. More birds. Oh, that's so, so pretty, Lisa. And then these were just in there loose. Just on all the cards? Yeah, just out of a book. Mm -hmm. A little die cut on there. I love that. And then I get a kick out of these. There's no way Lisa could have known this, but these are uh, bridge score pads. And cool. My husband and I have been trying for years to master bridge and I would have no idea how to score. I, I don't, I, it's just beyond me. I can, I can bid, but I can't score. So anyway, this will be fun. I think I'll put them in my own journal. Okay, so this is still just for me to play with. Well, that's Lisa, everybody. So I've got viewfinder, viewfinder, and card that she altered. No, I guess that's just a regular playing card. That'll work great with the bridge. Mm-hmm. Oh, and here we go. Monopoly. Yep. And then a little dictionary page. What's that? It's just a pretty quote. Mm-hmm. Or 
Oh, a big picture of doors. Flash card. Nice to cut that. <laughs> Good birds. 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 More birds. A worksheet. Division. Pretty card. Bingo. Yep. Bingo. And more of these pretty. I love that. Is that fabric? It's, it looks like it's a uh, file folder, maybe, with a uh, burlap type fabric all over it. I don't know. It would be a nice, um, you could use it for a, a journal cover. Mm -hmm. I think it would be maybe like, you could do it like that. Mm -hmm. and, oh gosh, oh gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. One steps. One steps. So we've got writing, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, another dictionary page. Looks like this comes, came from a catalog, probably. This page is oh. adventuring. When you meet a bear. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Oral and uh, oral and written English. Lots of numbers. Oh, oh look at he is holding me. Mm -hmm. Latitude and longitude. Oh, I love this. That's cool. And then, oh, some wallpaper samples. <laughs> look at that. How pretty. So we were out shopping today, my sister Cynthia and I, and we picked up maps in a cute little store. And here we have some more maps. Okay, just a fun picture. Mm -hmm. From a story. Yeah, from a children's, children's book. Stories, yeah. Yep, more of a children's book. Oh, here you go, my Advertisements. <laughs> Scarlet Tanager and Bluebird. Something, and Cardinals. Something that didn't hit Illinois this year. No. This, my sister oh, has my a goodness. bird haven out here. Get ready to type. Do you remember these yes. from school? Yes, they do. <laughs> what is that design, what is it? 1829. See. It's your house. It's a Rockford Ranch. Looks like a Rockford Ranch. It really does, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Huh. We tell the story. Oh, I remember these in school. Yeah. And sewing. There you go. Oh, this looks like um, quilting. 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 Drawing. Yep. Oh my gosh, what a treasure trove. Probably busy all summer. Okay, so that is just for fun. Now, this is for the challenge, and the challenge is uh, by Barbara at 49 Dragonflies, and we were, we were to send each other five items from our stash for the other to use in a journal page. Oh. Oh, that's beautiful. My favorite. Get a close up. Yep. Beautiful. I love this new one. Oh. Speedy recovery. Oh, that's sweet. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun to figure out. And I always like these. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh no. I got a bag. Wow. Okay, and then uh, this pretty glassine bag. Okay, Lisa. This is going to take me a day of thinking uh, what to do with all of these treasures. <laughs> so, more to come. So let me tell you about my last couple of days trying to edit. I finished up the project for Lisa with her five chosen elements and then I literally destroyed the taping 
and I used everything up so I contacted Lisa and I said what if I have my husband pick out five elements randomly and then I will do a new project and she would have totally agreed and totally understand so this is take two of my five item challenge with Lisa from Junk Journal Gems. Quickly, I thought you would like to see what I did with the first five items that Lisa had picked out for me. It turned out really beautiful. I used the roses, I used the greeting card, I did a little bit of stamping, and then I used the lace and the glassine bag, and I really enjoyed these items. These are the five items that my husband chose for me uh, to try another project for our exchange. This is stamped on cloth, which I'm sure Lisa did. And then I have uh, these birds. Then I have this tropical foliage in green and yellow. I have a flashcard every take. I've already done many takes. And this particular, uh, I think it was a part of a catalog where you could either order homes or you could order the designs. So these are the items I'm going to use the second time around. The journal I'm using is what I call my temporary uh, placekeeper. When I am working on June journals, I usually have two or three, maybe more going at the same time. And sometimes I change the pages out or from one to the other, or I just am not ready to put them in a binding. And I do hardcover rather than a soft cover. I've done a couple of soft covers, but I prefer the hard cover instead with the rounded back and hidden binding. So what I've started doing then is taking my signatures. So I think this is a signature of 12 maybe to 6. Yeah. Uh, 10. I guess you could call it 10. And then I put on the outside of them a piece of uh, heavy cardstock just to protect them while I'm flipping through or working on other pages. And then in the end, I can slip these all out, or I could slip one and two out, or however it ends up that I want to put them together in a regular journal. So I'm going to start in here because I am actually starting a new journal, and I have decided to use these two pages. What I'm going to do is place a small bead of glue along here. That way they won't get separated because this is going to be a double page. So I just take this all glitter glue and real thin line. And I put my all glitter glue in these smaller glue bottles with my arthritis, it makes it easier to squeeze them. Okay, so that is where my items will live. I cut everything and I am getting ready to make a pocket. I am going to cut this actually down because I also want to make a journaling card out of one side of this. So I'm going to glue this on here on one side for the journaling card and then I'll put the pocket on this side and I'm going to cover it with these pieces that I already get. Come here you little hummingbird. Okay and then I'm taking this piece and I want to make a little ruffle out of it but I thought you might get a kick out of the last sentence on this side. It comes off of the house plans and that last sentence reads the efficient kitchen and convenient laundry mean much to the housewife. And okay. Anyway, I'll be back. I'm going to, like I said, make a ruffle and I'm going to sew it on one side of the journal page. I'm back. I made 
two lines of stitching and then cut that in half and so I now have a little longer paper ruffle than I originally planned and you can see I'm doing a little bit of inking here using Ranger Archival ink. Next I want to make these um, car I'm going to use these cards to make a tag and a pocket. So I will begin that process. While you watch this, I wanted to explain a little bit about this challenge. The original idea actually came from, I believe it came from Peggy at the Paper Bumblebee, who sent five items to Barbara at 49 Butterflies and challenged her to use only those items on a page in her journal. And I will link Barbara's, Peggy's, and also Lisa's websites below. Barbara suggested to her viewers to find another journaler to link up with and do the same. Lisa was good enough to contact me and we agreed to work the challenge ourselves. I finished the pocket and now I'll finish the journaling piece and I decided I could journal across the back of the card over the birds and it should be visible either with a white or with a black pen and then I will glue the fabric piece that Lisa stamped the flower on onto the front. The next project I had some of the bird illustrations left over so I am making a paper clip and I will wrap the clip with a portion of the paper and I'll then use a little bit of fabric that I had cut off of the stamped fabric around the bottom. I'll age that a little bit and then use the two little birds to cover the top. The book page of the birds was a beautiful vintage piece but quite fragile and I was concerned working with it I might rip and tear it so in the end I made photocopies of the front and back sides. When I put the hummingbird on I covered the grouse head which I didn't particularly love, but kind of one of those things too late, got to make it work. So I just left it. And then I did put the second one on behind the hummingbird. In the end, I do take that, um, the one on the back, I actually just cover it with a leaf. I didn't like the way it looked. I had to cut down the hummingbird a little bit and it cut the wings off. So that portion is done. Then I moved on to the house and the blueprint. And I wanted to leave the blueprint on. I just feel like I want this kind of have a vintage look, but also a little bit of that mid-century modern feel that I enjoy. So I left the book blueprint and now I am coloring with a watercolor pencil 
on the shutters and a little bit on some of the shrubs and the trees just to give it a little bit of green cast here and there for interest. This particular house plan reminds me very much of the homes that would have been built under that mid-century modern look. I myself live in what's called a Rockford Ranch, as you might have heard us talking about in the earlier part of this video, which is, is uh, 1965 build, just a, a couple of years past, but this was very typical of that time period and it is a it is a style that I truly enjoy. I really liked the way this turned out. Just enough green but not too much. So now I'm going to fold it right along what will be the crease line or the center. Um, my plan is that that will help hold it down. Now I did leave the outer edges open, not um, gluing all the way out to the edge. In the end, I didn't really need to do that, but the reason you might want to think about doing that is because then you can glue up underneath another element. You could draw around the outside for shadowing, and I really wasn't sure what I was going to do there, so I made the initial decision not to glue it down. I do lift it up a little bit here as I'm stamping um, the faux trees onto it, but I probably could have just used a piece of paper underneath it. I also used some ink to give a little bit of sky color and dimension, just also to kind of make the house pop out and make this blue, blue tends to pull things back, and I thought that would set off the house. Now I go into a whole process of trying to design these flowers that I fussy cut, and I have designed florals for years, but when it comes to sitting paper on a page, the way it was be pleasing to me, I really struggled with this. You're not even seeing a small portion of what I went through, but I finally did come up with something. And then as I glued it down, I really liked the way it turned out with it being even further out from the house. So I think setting it up this way really gives a, the look of depth to the overall page. And then I just wanted to trim off the leaves to the page edge. I didn't do a lot of tearing here simply because I wanted the cleaner edges. That's probably more mid-century modern than, than vintage. Here I'm putting a little bit of sentiment on here and it said the blueprints and then the other one says all the charms. These I actually cut off of the plan um, narration. Just words that I liked. Here's where I replaced the bird with that portion of a leaf. So that is essentially my completed page. The last thing I wanted to do was to write a quote across the top that reads, the ornament of a house is the friends that frequent it by Ralph Waldo Emerson. I also date it and then I am done. I wanna thank Lisa for sending me so many lovely items for choosing the first five and then graciously allowing me a second five to tape. So this again is one last look at the one, the last one, and then I will show you both of them together. Thank you so much for joining me today. It would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe and also hit the like buttons. I'll see you again soon.